Welcome at the do's and don'ts of YouTube. It's so nice to be here and I'm so excited to have Donna Ohana all the way originally from Israel and Yoga Van Dam. And if you're here joining us live today, we want to know two questions. And please, can you type in the chat bar and we'll take those questions live. Do you have a YouTube channel? Can you and tell us if you have a YouTube channel or do you want to actually start one? Please put that in the chat bar. And it doesn't matter, by the way, if you watch it like it's a replay, still put it in the comments because we will still respond even after. So just put it and let us know how many of you have a YouTube channel or how many of you would love to start one but not sure how to do it. Amazing. Amazing. So I am so excited. I have Donna Ohana here. Her company's name is Big Consulting and Donna is a marketing and social media expert. And for the last 12 years, she's been helping her clients with marketing, public relations and social media. And she has a really active social media channel on YouTube. So, so excited to have you here, Donna. Also excited to be here, but I'm also excited to be with you, Yoke Vidal, that you are also actually a speaker and a speaker coach that actually teach clients to win tender pitches and have confidence and develop the public speaking for stage and video and webinars. And that's why I think it's gonna be the YouTube side from the spag the marketing side of it, also how to build your confidence and put yourself out there the right way that can help you grow on a personal level, but also on a business level. Amazing. Santi Korf, it's awesome to have you here. She's a, a wonderful photographer based in Pretoria, by the way, Donna. So she often oh. speaks on personal branding from the photography side, and I've been using a lot of her photos in my marketing. Awesome to have you. So maybe we can collaborate, and I would love if you can put your link to your YouTube channel in the comments. So if you have a YouTube channel, please put a link in the comments. So We'll take a look at this and, uh, you know, we can subscribe to each other as well to help each other grow. Amazing. So Donna, do you want to start with your first do of YouTube? Yes. So as you understand, we're going to give you some do's and don'ts. So we're going to start now. So my first do, yeah, that it's a must have a clear channel cover. And I think a lot of people sometimes miss that part out. So when you enter a YouTube channel, the cover up that you have, right? the same as you've got it on Facebook um, and in LinkedIn, it's an important one. It's a way, for, a place for you to tell the people what the channel is about. You know, what's gonna be, on which day are you gonna post, um, you're gonna upload videos, what's gonna be there. Like everything you wanna know uh, needs to be there. It needs to be very clear, very like you know just simple not make it too complicated but allow people to understand what the channel is about but you know and, and and as well it's important to mention that your design needs to be in line with your brand identity okay which is like your logo designs your colors your fonts everything to be in one line i would recommend to put a picture of yourself because you are the channel you are the brand so let people to get to know you so that's a very important one. Amazing. I love that. And I um, I think what people really struggle with, with the channel design as well, Donna, is, is there's different sizes from mobile to desktop to even a uh, um, TV screen. So to make sure that that channel is actually looking perfect on all three, all of the different platforms, even on tablet. Um, Santi is saying that um, I have a very, very underdeveloped channel. That's fine, Santi. That's why you're here. So you're going to get some amazing tips. And we'll also talk about a masterclass that we'll be running in two weeks' time that can really help you even do a bit of an audit on your current channel. And, so I'm, and I'll say one more tip before you continue, that that's mm. the beauty in YouTube. Okay, so YouTube, the same as Facebook, you can even take old videos that you've done a while ago and uplift them and still bring them to life and still start to get views on all their stuff. So there's always room to change. It's not like an Instagram that an old post is kind of dead, except like, you know, you can share it in the story and make bring it to life a bit, but just do it like this. So that's the, the, the right place for you now to learn more about this. And awesome, Rebecca, um, I would love to hear what's, uh, is it on clarity and simplicity? 
Um, I see you're starting your soon, soon yours. What's going to be? Let us know what's the topic going to be about. I would love to hear. Brilliant. So my first tip aligned to your, um, your having a clear YouTube channel is more to do as you as a speaker on the YouTube channel. I want you to do a quick brand exercise and maybe you can just take a pen and paper and write this down for yourself. So the first thing is asking yourself, what do you want people to think, feel and do after watching your video? So what do you want them to think about? How do you want them to feel? And what do you want them to do? So um, Donna is saying, if they're looking at that channel banner, what do they see about you immediately? It needs to be aligned to your corporate identity. In the same way, the way you dress, the way you come across, mm -hmm. the tone of voice, your camera presence, if you're actually looking into the lens of the camera, is all going to have an impact on how people feel when they're looking at you. Are you seen as an expert? So when you decide what, you, what they want to think of you, by brainstorming that, what are you a subject expert in that you could make a channel about? Is that then also portrayed on your channel art? And is that portrayed in every single video that you do? What you want them to think, feel, and do. And the do is going to come into the video with your call to action. Over to you, Donna. And I can say that I really agree with you because, you know, bottom line, people buy from people and people buy from people they feel a certain type of connection with. And that's a place for you, you know, to have like first impression. So they come to your channel, the certain things that they're going to come and see. And if you're going to bring your personality out there and it doesn't matter if you're a public person or even you're a depressing person, it doesn't matter. Bring your personality because for each and every one of us, there is a crowd that we want to follow. So not everyone will be like, ah. Amazing. <laughs> and that's okay. That's fine. For everyone, you've got your own card. So just be you. If you true to yourself, it's going to work for you very well. And I'm actually want to take it now to the other side. Okay. So the something that people don't have and don't do. So, you know, when you upload an, um, a video, so there is a video, but there's no thumbnail to that video. There's not something like a cover, an image that explain what the video is all about. But when people wanna come and click on it, they're like, okay, others are actually more standing out and yours is kind of blending. So no one will wanna click on it. And by no one clicking on it, it means that it's not an, an interesting YouTube uh, video and YouTube won't promote you. So you really need to have something outstanding that again will still be in line with your brand identity uh, and with what you're trying to the look and feel that you're trying to create but it needs to stand out so there's different ways to do it by the title by the image the colors there's different things but you want to get this because when you're going to look at the analytics side you want to have uh, more than five percent percentage that of people that actually comes to you because they clicked on that thumbnail because it was something that was interesting to them that's amazing that's amazing and i i think we can probably all go back and change our thumbnails from previous videos as well i actually recently did a, a rework of many of my thumbnails i see that santi um has just put her her youtube channel there i'll just um put it there if anyone wants to go have a look at santi Kof, the photographer's youtube channel thank you so and much santi and I would love to hear how many of you actually design a thumbnail for themselves. Like, do you have it? Are you using it? I would love to hear like, you know, or you never even heard about this before. You never even thought of doing it. So just let us know in the comments. So we'll uh, have a better understanding. What was quite nice for me, if I can do a quick shout out um, to my brand strategist, um, Liz Boru from a story studio. She um, gave me Canva training and specifically on thumbnails so that I could have certain formats and edit it myself. So sometimes actually being smart about it where you have a designer getting you some kind of template together that you can just edit and put things in there so you don't have to start from scratch and just making sure that you're following the design elements help a lot because a lot of us just don't have the, the knowledge and you don't always have the budget to go to a designer every time to design every single thumbnail. So you need to find smart ways around it. So I wanted to get into my first don't. 
So, um, so you were talking about the the um, YouTube thumbnail. My first one is when people just wing it. I do a lot of presentation coaching. So um, when people actually have to go to events or um, helping people with their pitches for tenders and all of that. And when people don't plan for a meeting and never mind a YouTube video and you're just going to be mumbling around and you have no clear intent, goal and structure, you're going to lose the people. So people are going to feel like, what, what is the value? You're just mumbling. You're repeating yourself. So even for today, the fact that we have a set out structure is going to give so much more value in this live. And I, I don't say, I don't think you need to script out every single word of your YouTube video, but have a core structure, maybe have a few core bullet points and a structure that I can share with you that works really well is problem, solution, benefit. What is your client really struggling with? How can you help them? What's the solution? What will their world look like once they have that solution? And what will be the benefit? So that's just an example of a structure. If you just map that out for your video, that will greatly help you to actually keep people engaged and to listen and get what you're saying because people get distracted really quickly. So have a structure, don't wing it. And I'll add to this that, you know, it's very important like to find a way to do it in a way that will fit your needs and the way you do things. So for example, Yoki can be the kind of person that needs everything to write it down and to read it like from a teleprompter. I'm the top, for example, of a person that I just need a bullet points. I just need to know like bottom lines, like what I'm trying to reach, what I'm trying to get, and I just go with the flow. And every person's got his own way to do it. So once you finding the right way for you, and sometimes can take time. So let's say if you're starting your YouTube channel now, or you're just in the beginning, it will take you time maybe to find what's working for you and what's not. And you can see that from one video to another, there is an improvement. You're going to see a better flow in it. Definitely. Definitely. So are you going to do another do, Donna? Yes. Yeah, so the next do is actually to reaching out to a specific niche. And I think that's something in general that, and it's so glad um, that you're designing your thumbnails now. That's awesome. Um, we'll take a look at your channel after the live. Um, and I, someone else, if you got YouTube channels, please put a link, write us what the channel is about. If, by the way, you've got us have questions, that's the place for you. If you agree or disagree with what we're saying, it's an open tell discussion. Us. Feel free, tell us, share with us. Um, so the next one is, is to find a niche. And I think that's in general in marketing. We tend to reach out to a bigger target audience instead of niching our business. We're forgetting that on social media especially, you cannot speak to different type of audience. And sometimes we think that we're trying to reach a certain one, but we actually don't get that it's actually different niches. So if we cannot find something that comes in common, so it's not the right niche for us. And especially in the YouTube as well, you know, you're trying to speak to a certain type of audience. You speak in a certain type of language. You're sharing certain things that, you know, are beneficial to certain type of people. Who are these people? Find your niche. Um, and you can also like on the other side, you know, that you say that basically you cannot be like everything to everyone. That's part of it, you know. Find the right people that's relevant for you and that will come to you. Even myself, that I speak about marketing and social media and branding, everything around that's my niche. I've got two, and for me, it's actually one niche, but it's divided to two different languages because I also have my Hebrew. Uh, but it's still, they have the same you know, kind of pain points, same issues. They are coming with a certain um, solution to a problem they both experience. And that's the thing. I can speak on other topics as well, but it's not necessarily what something I need to put in my channel because then I'm confusing as well. So be like, if I'll go to what you said before, to have a very clear message, the very clear message needs to come in your thumbnail, in your cover, in your content, in everything you present to the outside. And it also needs to come to the niche. So really niche yourself. So think about who's your niche. And if you're not sure, I do have a, a questionnaire on how to define your target market. Um, so you're more than welcome also to put your email address in the comments and I'll send you the questionnaire to um, complete. That would be amazing. I actually have a client that would really need that, Donna. So with yes, your permission, <laughs> I'll send it to him. 
So, um, so aligned to what you're saying about um, niching, my tip when it actually comes to developing the content, the message that you're going to be delivering on the channel, I do this in my um, six-week presentation bootcamp. I get my clients to do an empathy map. And it comes from design thinking where you do a deep dive asking yourself exactly what you're saying. What is that specific audience? Who is this person? So let's say Santi the photographer was my audience, okay? I could say she's a female entrepreneur and I could ask myself, what is Santi's dreams and desires? Potentially it's to get many more photography clients. Potentially it's to get a um, repeat clients or to be featured on top billing or, you know, to, to really be noticed in the media, to, to get some of her photos sold at really high amounts, to get commissions. So that's maybe some of her dreams and desires. So keep on asking yourself, what is this person really wanting? What do they want to achieve? And through your channel and the wording that you use, can you become the vehicle to help them move in that direction? So I, I'll give you an example. Many years ago, I wanted to get into speaking and I was at a Toastmasters club and one of the ladies knew I've been doing Toastmasters for many, many years and I was wanting to get into speaking and training. And she said to me, do you know what, Yoko, we know your ultimate goal is you want to quit corporate, you want to have your own business, you want to be on stage. At our club, we're only advanced and we're the stepping stone. We're going to give you all of the tools to facilitate, to speak. And she was right. <laughs> That's exactly what they did. But I didn't even ask how much it was. She knew my end goal. She spoke about that. And I immediately signed on without knowing how much it was going to be because it was aligned to my goal. So if you can do a deep dive into your ideal audience, as Donna was saying, maybe with that target, target audience map of hers, and you could even send out questionnaires, find out their dreams and their desires, but also the things that's holding them back. So what's stopping them? What are the fires in their life? And if you do that deep dive, that will give you all of the content that you need. And some of it will be videos, but some of it could even be courses that people are willing to pay for because it's real problems and real deep desires in their life. So do empathy map, get into the client's dreams and desires and their problems. And um, that will help you with all of your content. And I'll add to what you're saying, okay? Defining the target market is super crucial for each and every business. Doesn't matter if you have your business for 10 years, for 20 years, it's something that you actually need to redo every few months. Because knowing your target market and like you're saying, like learning even more and more about them will help you to understand, you know, uh, who are you trying to reach out to? Where can you find them? On which social media platforms and other platforms? Um, you're going to learn, you know, what's the timing that you can actually post? Because, for example, if I'm trying to reach out to moms, I would not post on the afternoon, right? Between like four o'clock to eight o'clock. That's the time they're with the kids, right? Families, dinner, stuff like this. So I don't want to waste good content as well. So the same is on the YouTube channel and everything. Know as much as you can about your target market to help you. And that's why if you guys want, as I'll see a few of you, I'll send you the questionnaire. It's free. So you can just do it and get a better understanding on where you are and learn as much as you can about them. Because this is going to help you lots with your business. And also bear in mind that they are changing. Okay. Maybe because your business have changed or maybe because they have changed. Um, and COVID, for example, is a great, um, it's a great like example to show you how your target market changed for all of us because the behavior has changed, okay? Most people start moving to the online. So because they changed, now you need to make some changes in your business as well. So that's why it's super, super uh, important uh, for that. I'm so um, excited, like Donna. We have Yuri, the magic sauce here. Yuri, it's so awesome to have you. I just want to celebrate Yuri. I think he had 500,000 views on his YouTube channel. We are so proud of you, Yuri, amazing. So. Any comments or input that you have to give us here would also be highly appreciated. Donna, I wanted to quickly give an example. I'm so sorry for jumping in there. You were saying COVID changed things. So last year when COVID hit, it felt like the carpet was pulled underneath my feet. And I was like, okay, deep dive, do the empathy map, redo the target audience because my clients used to be corporates, training groups of people. And guess what? The first thing they cut? Training budget. 
none of the companies wanted to do anything. And I was like, okay, let's quickly pivot, find another market that urgently needs to do things differently because um, I don't know if you, you were in South Africa last year when lockdown hit, hey? Yeah. We yeah. were constrained to our homes for, I don't know, like three months or something crazy. And um, I then just decided to launch my bootcamp online. So I didn't even know Zoom. I had to very quickly <laughs> learn Zoom. But when I did the deep dive of, of the empathy map, I realized the people that struggled the most at that time was actually the entrepreneurs that used to go see clients that had to now connect with people online and have attraction marketing versus having coffee with them. So I actually found a niche there of people that needed to do videos, that needed to have um, online meetings, run webinars. So pretty much the kind of people that we maybe have here today that have learned the skill in the meantime that attraction marketing was what it was about. So um, if you don't redo your, your target audience every few months, you're actually missing out on opportunities. It is. And, I, and Santi, I read what you said to get high-end professional clients who need branding photos for professional and business branding. And I'll ask you a question, okay? So just write to yourself, but why? Why do they want to do personal business branding, okay? What's the reason behind it? Like, why is it, what's the pain, okay? Where is it so for them? Where are they feeling that they need their, that this is the solution? So try to think about from that side. And that's what the questionnaire will help you as well to guide you <clears throat> and have a better understanding of what they're going through. Because professional branding business, like, you know, everyone needs it. Everyone who's got a business needs it. But why them? Okay. What's specific in them? And that's the part of the niche that we were talking about. And if I'll move from here, um, to the next topic and again for those of you joining us now or in the middle just keep us let us know feel free to ask questions let us know if you got a channel and if you do put it the link in the comments um and if you don't are you looking to start one so that's going to help you and the next one that it's a big no-no that a lot of people don't have a trailer okay so that's a video that presents people what the channel is about some actually businesses take like one of the top videos and put it there as a trailer for me i less like it because i don't think it's really explained people what the channel is about and who you are so for example in my trailer that i've done a while ago um i've actually put like you know i'm I, i'm telling people what the channel is about but i'm also sharing something personal okay i'm sharing that i do yoga because yoga for me helps me with my business. It really made my mind clear on certain things. So I'm mixing between who am I as a person and that's my vibe. And that's okay for some people to watch and say, oh my God, she, she talks too much. Oh, I don't feel a connection or whatsoever. And that's okay. And some people, oh my God, I love her vibe. I've got all of them. And that's the nice thing. You want to bring the right people to your channel. You want to have the people that connect to you. That whatever way you find to present your videos, they would feel connected with and that's okay you know like we all have our ways to do so put a trailer get people to know what the channel is about so if i'm for those of you who may be just joining now if i'll look at like you know the two and those that we spoke about now from that side you have a clear cover you know what's the message what's the channel is about have a trailer have a clear thumbnail you know allow people to make their life easy think about it from that side there's so much information out there, lots, lots of content, lots of images on Instagram, on YouTube, on everything. If you're not going to stand out and make their life easy, like feed them like you do to the kids, like mm, with a spoon, like this to their mouth, they're going to disappear. They're going to go to the place that it's easy, that it's accessible, and it's very clear what it's all about. And that's something very important. And that's the tips, by the way, in general, to all social media platforms, to all your marketing, Make things very clear. Make it very accessible. I see there's Brilliant. lots of fun while I was chatting. <laughs> Brilliant. So, so, um, so you're talking about don't, do not not have a trailer. So if you're putting your trailer together, again, remember what we said. Make it apart. Potentially, what are the dreams and desires of the client? So um, remember, Santi, what, um, what Donna was saying. Why do they need personal brand photos? Do they have certain dreams and desires? Or do they have certain problems? Can your channel either discuss 
the problems, the pain points, or can it actually discuss those dreams and desires? So um, what I recently did, what I'm at the, at the moment using as a trailer, and I'll just give you an example, I'm part of a coaching app called Stickler for coaches, and they were doing the session with us over Zoom, and they said they're going to make a trailer video of us, and we had to put a structure together from the coaching side. And I put on my makeup, my outfits, I had my lighting ready, and we did this video and they still haven't aired this video. But then I decided, hey, I've already scripted it out or like you said, Donna, put a few um, bullet points. These are gonna be the main things. Let me just shoot a few videos. So I just sat down, I already looked gorgeous. And I shot the video and then I shared a little story on LinkedIn to say, I was asked for a coaching app to make a video, but I thought it, it might be of interest to you too. Do you know how many comments I had just of people saying, Wow, now we know what you do. Now we can actually refer clients to you. So if people don't know what you're about and they don't know what value they can get for your channel and even the services that you offer for your business, how are you going to get it? So another example, I am part of... A I'll agree for a second. Just remember that like the way you said it, add it to your website, promote it on the different social media platforms you got. Use it as a way to announce people that that's what you do and it doesn't need to be super professional if you look at me i've done it um back then i tried to dye my roots but <laughs> no one told me that the type of color i've chose it's not from my type of hair so i became very redhead so i've literally done it even with this and i'm actually using my phone which look like whatever i didn't care that's me i've done that's what i felt the most Go to a trailer and share it wherever you can and use it as something that you know you can tell other people and announce them what's your business about and say YouTube will be about workplaces engagement and yeah I will share my personal story awesome idea about the trailer I'm glad um, and you guys Amazing. like there's Amazing. so many tips to come for you guys here and I want to tell you that we also planning a master class in two weeks time that we're gonna allow you guys to actually share your YouTube channels and get a feedback from the two of us, um, and to the uh, and I see there is a question on how long should the trailer be? Not more than a minute, two at the top. Like you know, people, it needs to be very easy, very like fast, like very clear, like what's the thing is about. Um, and there I see there's another comment. I even think it should not be too sleek at all. Right? It's harder to keep up um, if it's not completely new. And that's exactly what we said. You need to be you. Okay, if you being authentic, that's what's gonna work for you, and that's okay. That's why we spoke about the niching. You cannot be everything to everyone, and that's okay if people won't like you, and it's okay if people won't like your work. You want to bring the right people, and I'll give it like this. So think about from the side that um, if you have, for example, um, if you're trying to reach it to a wider target market, right? So let's say I'm trying to reach it to a million people, but if I'm not really niching myself. I'm gonna win one, five, ten. But if I'm gonna reach out for like say a thousand people, so I really niche myself, I can actually get to win at least like 500 of them. There's a difference between the 500 to the five or 10 that you're gonna do if you're trying to reach out. So if you're very clear to yourself, you're gonna be very clear to others and you're gonna attract the right people. And that's what we're trying to tell you with the do's and don'ts on what people are missing out and what people need to do from the side to help yourself to be very clear with your channel so you can see the growth and don't chase after the quick grow social media there's no magic rome wasn't built in a day and so is your business so is your brand so is your channels okay the people that are trying to chase after the quick wins it's not going to work you want to bring the right people that you can actually convert them from subscribers from followers to actual paying clients so always bear that in mind Donna, can we go for another five to 10 minutes? Because we have, um, yeah. if you guys need to go, you can go, but we still have a bit of content to get through. So um, do you want to quickly tell them about the tags in your don'ts? Yes. Um, so I'm going to link the, uh, I'm going to do quickly a do and don'ts together. Um, so one of them is that the good thing to do is to link between your title, your description, and your tags. All of them need to be in line. And that's from the other one side, the don'ts, that people forget to put the tags in. 
Okay, to just upload a video, give it a title, maybe write something short in the description and let it go. No, the tags, it's the same as the hashtags, it's the same as you do an SEO um, uh, for your uh, website. It will allow people and YouTube to link it together and allow people to know what's the content is about, what's the video is about. So there's a very clear system and we're gonna try to touch it more um, in the masterclass maybe uh, on how you can actually link them. But that's what's gonna help you to increase your exposure. And for example, if I look at my channel, when I look at the analytics, I know that most of the people who come to watch my videos, even while I'm asleep, they're coming from Google search and from YouTube search. So even in the last like three months, I had some stuff on my personal life that I wasn't really on a mindset to make new videos to my channel. And that's okay because I got the channel to work for me. I got YouTube and Google search to work for me. So even during that time, I was still accumulating more views and I was still growing my channel. And that's what you're trying to reach out to. And that's why it's important to have tags and to link between the text to the description to the title. Brilliant. So I want to quickly give um, my do and don't. So my do is have a very clear central message. So if you're deciding what your message is going to be for a video, can you decide between three to eight words maximum? Can you try to repeat that message often and make sure that you convey passion and use different tones of voice to convey it so people can very clearly see that you have a clear message? So in my little spiel that I did just now, my message was clear message. And I indicated that of my voice. So what you don't want to do is don't use the word I, 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 I when you're speaking. Use and don't use the word we or the audience. Speak about you. So if I use the word you, I'm speaking to you, to one or a thousand. It's as if I'm speaking into your heart and there's uh, 999 others listening in to the conversation. So if I say to you, what are you struggling with at the moment? What do you want to get right with your clear message? What do you, what is your dreams and desires for your YouTube channel versus what do you guys want? You know, what do typical audiences want? Do the people listening here today think this? Can you hear the difference? If I just use the word you, I'm speaking to every single one of you into your own mind and heart. Over to you, Donna. You're creating a personal touch, and that's the thing. That's why we're asking you what's worked for you and what's not, where you feel what you are with your channel. Um, and by the way, my channel is a big uh, consulting. I cannot actually put a link here, but I'll try to do it after. Um, the live, um, but it is, and I'm not chasing after the numbers. I'm working, and and I, and you know what? I want to mention something. When you look at the YouTube channel, there's two ways to look at it. Are you a YouTuber, or are you using YouTube as part of your um, organic marketing? And I'll quickly touch it. So a YouTuber, it's a person that that's what all, that's the business, okay? That's what he does all the time is on YouTube, working on YouTube, getting content on YouTube, um, getting new equipment. Like it's a different type of work. But if you're using other social media platform, you can use YouTube as part of your organic marketing, as part of a place for you, a platform to build relationships, to build trust, to gain people, and to build your own community. Okay, and that's the differences between them. So try to think on where you want to take your YouTube channel. I, for example, you take my YouTube channel. I'm not trying to be a YouTuber, that that's my entire life. I am on all social media platforms. So it's going to be exhausting if I cannot just focus on one. But I use it as part of me building trust. That's what pushed me to make my first video. I hated the camera. It took me two weeks to convince myself to make my first video. I literally said with lipstick on my face for two weeks and every time I came to my computer and I said, okay, today I'm gonna do it. And then I'm sitting, and, mm, no, now it's gonna happen today. It took me two weeks to do it, okay? So don't be afraid, it takes time, but think about what's the purpose, okay? What you're trying to gain from that YouTube channel. And again, have, you're half a YouTuber. What is the half? <laughs> Explain, I would love to hear what you're, the way you see it. But it is, think about it from that side, okay? What the purpose of you 
having a YouTube channel because that will help you with one of the do's, for example, that is to be consistent, okay? Always be consistent. Try to be consistent. Uh, the must is with your content, that's of course, but if you can also do with your timing, that will be perfect. Like have certain days, get people to wait for your content. I must admit, I'm consistent with my content, but I'm not consistent with my timing. Um, but that's the problem when you are uh, doing so many things on the same time. Um, but it is, I am trying to do my best on this, but I do recommend find the right things to do for yourself. Um, and the next not that people don't do is that they link to this, is that they upload a video maybe once a month. I have multiple personalities. <laughs> <laughs> One is the YouTube. <laughs> that's amazing. I love it. <laughs> um but really like you know um don't upload a video once a month and forget about it okay if you haven't got your youtube to work for you uploading once a month or once in two months or even twice a month not gonna help you grow your channel okay i was working hard to get my channel to where it is now that i can allow myself not to work hard sometimes on my channel but i can't still cannot you know uh neglect it so you need to find, you need to get to a place and that's on every social media platform. If you can get the social media platform to work for you, your life is gonna be easier because it's not a matter of spending hours a day on your YouTube channel, on your Instagram, on your LinkedIn or this. You need to work with the tactics, okay? Straight to the point. You need to work that you know exactly what you're gonna get in each and every one of them and how you can promote it. And how, because again, on YouTube, the four the first 48 hours are crucial okay so you need to work hard on promoting this um it's a long game three to five years of hard work to start making some money again oh, yeah. it's depending on your channel and what you're trying to achieve from your channel if you're chasing Can after I like the money it's gonna take time so don't do it because of this so so my do and don't align to that is um you were talking about timing and um, what I've heard, but I would love to hear from Yuri as well, is try to not make your, your actual videos less than five minutes. They say the sweet spot is about eight minutes and maximum around 15. So today we're actually doing a live stream, but I know that a lot of people won't watch the full thing while others will. They actually say with um, audio, that's why podcasts are also good. You could even repurpose your video content, extract the audio and do a separate podcast with that. So try to see what is your sweet spot in terms of looking at the analytics. When do people drop off and see, do you actually have a clear catchy opening to draw people in? Do you have a clear call to action and an end? And do you perhaps have three main points? So can you for that video not do more than three main points in that five to 15 minute video? Things to avoid what people often get wrong, I see this on the presentation side, is they don't rehearse or they don't practice. So if you're gonna do your trailer, try to make sure that your first 10 to 15 seconds is worked out and perfect and you can try it up front. Maybe you could even record it on Zoom, play it back for yourself, Look at your, your background, your style, you know, what is your eyes doing? Are you looking comfortable on camera? If you look at people in the movie and film industry, they rehearse from four to eight to 12 weeks at a time to, to get everything perfect before they go on film. If you're just going to wing it and you don't have a clear structure and um, some things aren't well rehearsed, you're not going to cut it. So I'm not saying to you, you have to rehearse every single video that you do, but the certain sections that are really important, make sure that you get it perfect first time around. I'll just uh, add to the timing, you can see you as well wrote it. It's not a matter of, there's not a winning formula for this, okay? You need to trial certain things in your channel and then to look after at the retention. So if you see that people are not staying longer in your channel, so make the videos shorter. And that's how you're gonna learn. There's different things. Um, and consistency in uh, upload time is my challenge. Um, and that's the thing, you know, you you need to find certain days that it's easier for you, that you know you've got more time. You can schedule a fun um, if you know that you're having pro problem with this. So there's different ways to do it. Um, and it is important 
But again, it's more of a must to have consistency in your content um, and not in a time. Um, and again, as I said, but I really would love to invite you guys to check out the link is here as well to the masterclass. Um, if you have a YouTube channel, you can put the link, you can send us the link and you're going to get feedback from the two of us. We can take a look at it together. We're also going to give um, each and every one of us uh, some tips and more content to share because, you know, also here there's a time limit and there's so much more to learn. There is more to learn on the how to write a description and how to choose the title and how to use the tags and how to look at the analytics. And really, there's so much to know about YouTube. But the moment you know everything, that you need to know and you can get it well and you'll see it's going to be nice that you go to sleep at night and you wake up in the morning and you see the views that are coming up that feels good and when you're starting to actually get clients out of it because they were watching your videos and they're like oh my god you know i've been following you for a while and i want to and that's the thing have a strong online presence so think about it from that side um one little thing being um what is it i always add uh, it's a lot of work, so you better enjoy it. I love doing it, spending my evenings and weekends creating cool stuff. And it's true. Because you do you and you enjoy it, it comes out. Your personality comes out of it and people feel it. So really think about it from that side. And I think we gave you here lots of things to think about. Um, we also don't want to overload you. Um, we would love to hear in the comments. Was it helpful for you? What are the takeaways you're going to take from this live? Um, who would love to join us to the master class in two weeks from now? Um, and any type of feedback. And I would love to see uh, your guys' channel so I can take a look. I can give you a subscribe. Uh, feel free to come and ask us questions. If you were not feeling comfortable to ask here, um, even if you watch it after, you can send us a private message. We would love to hear and assist wherever we can. You know, I'm volunteering the two of us. <laughs> you do so, and, so yeah. sorry no so we would just see the master class yeah so what i want to add about the master class um what you can learn there is we're going to be looking at confidence hacks we're also going to be looking at how do you quickly put your message together donna is going to be looking at all of the back end um reviewing we're doing some hot seat coaching so so we're going to choose a few of the people that submit their channels and videos and during the course we're actually going to be giving feedback on the channel art the tagging the videos the content all of that but every single person that has attended the masterclass will get written feedback within four days after the masterclass and we have early birds available right now so have a have a link at that below but any questions um, that you're putting Yuri is saying something quite funny. He said he's making a trailer with his cat, Baz. I've seen Baz many times, Yuri. I, I feel like I have a connection with Baz. But you know what? Don't be afraid to do it. I made. I was trying to make a video to a client of mine on how to do something with reels on Instagram. And my dog was nagging me. So I made a video out of it in my reels. So use it. I posted some videos and I haven't been consistent. I think my videos isn't good. I will have to delete them all. Don't delete them. No, no, no. Don't delete them. Okay. So not to delete their old videos. Keep them. That's the nice thing from a branding perspective. Allow people to see the improvement. If you go to my channel, I invite you to go and take a look at my first videos. My first one that I've done by myself, I felt like I was sitting like this on the couch. So what? That was me back then. I've evolved. My brand was evolving during the time. Don't delete it because you never know. Maybe it's an interesting topic and people that are going to join now would love and enjoy it. Don't delete it, but work now on how you can get better, how you improve yourself. Yes, you were there. Yeah. Thanks for the tip. So, I, have a have so I want to ask you guys if there's one, one thing that you're taking away from today, would you mind just posting that in the chat for us? What is one thing that you want to go implement and do differently after watching this live today? We would love to hear it in the comments, um, even if you watch it after, okay? Still, we are still going to read it. We're still going to respond. If you have questions, that's your time now before we're closing up. So that's your place to ask questions, to share maybe your concerns or anything. And as I say, if you don't feel comfortable here and now to share, we can always do it like on a private note. Um, 
for those of you who ask for the target market like questionnaire, I'll send you in the email address. I'll take a look at all of this after. Um, and yeah, and we would love to see you. See, Yuri said that he needs to make a trailer. Awesome, go do it. I would love Yuri. to watch it. Yuri and everyone else, please post your YouTube channel links below so that um, we can go and look at them. I look at yours all the time, but just for everyone else's benefit, I think that would be amazing. Yes, and so again, Donna, what are you what do you think is the most value people will get through that masterclass? Why, if your younger self had come to that class, what would that donor have learned? So I think you're going to learn how to get YouTube to start working for you just by small changes. Okay. Um, it's not going to be like, you know, like a, a full course that, you know, um, we have, but it's going to be something that can help you make some small changes in your channel that you can see some improvements. And that's going to be the best thing for you. Cause it is sometimes a lot of time, the small changes that you need to do. I've never haven't had enough thought of a channel before. So maybe that's a great thing. Think about if it's going to help you with your business to promote your business and to help you with, building your own community. Um, and by the way, we would love to invite you to be more active on the Female Entrepreneur Collect Collective Support Group uh, on Facebook. We're gonna add more content there. So share questions, stuff. Um, we also have a Telegram group that we share free tips. Uh, so if you wanna join, I can send you links after. Um, and I see Santi wrote two things that she took from. Uh, the why, the pain of the clients, which I love. And you instead of I love it. I love it, love it, love it. So, so from my side, um, what you can take away from for the masterclass, I'm just posting the female group for you there if you wanted to join that. Is so many people struggle to actually just put their message together, and I give you clear structures and hacks to get there quicker. So I, I even recently had. Four, four people that attended my course in October last year um, got new jobs and they were using the structures that, that I taught them on videos and presentations in the interviews. So um, if you actually have these structures in your back pocket, you can use it every single time as you're making videos. And not only in videos, even if you're going back to networking meetings, even if you are seeing clients, having structures to um to describe what you do will just make your message much more stickier so donna will be your your video expert and youtube behind the scenes while i'm your presentation storytelling expert and i think together you will get some great feedback on your channels and your videos so eloise please don't delete those videos let us review them and see what you're already doing great and what could make it pop and stand out more and maybe some of those ideas could be rehashed in another video so um let's rather see what you have as actually an asset of yours That's brilliant okay. any last words from your side donna i'm seeing that we no. always you know, so we i had, just said like, the first combination that we have here okay that is actually going to give you the full package on how to get your youtube channel and in general even if you don't have a YouTube channel, but you're doing lives on Instagram or lives on LinkedIn or lives on Facebook, or you're using for reels on Instagram, it's a combination of the two of them that will make you look at things from a different perspective and how to build yourself eventually as a brand. Um, Cause that's the combination of the two of us. If we're telling you how to share your story, your brand story from the presentation side to the actual side and how to get it from the marketing side and get it like as a business. So we would love you to join us. Um, we would love the feedback. Um, and I see that lots of you have lots of takeaways from this. That's amazing. Again, if you have questions, feel free to contact us. Um, we're really trying to give you like lots of tips in the short time. It was even supposed to be shorter, but there was like lots of activities here, which is amazing and we'd love it. Um, and thank you for each and every one of you. And I would take a look on all your YouTube channels and all your comments. Um, and I will subscribe to all of you and, you know, and that's the things, you know, help each other, you know, let's support each other. Let's help each other grow. Um, and let's, you know, and be you eventually just be you. That's the important part. And I see that 
that's the best technique of selling. Definitely. If you don't believe in the product, which is you, how can you expect someone else? And that's why I think Yoke can help you lots from the presentation, you know, on that side of building that confidence on like putting yourself out there and believing yourself. Of course, you're at peace and love and understanding. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the cat? It's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome to have such an interactive crowd. And I know that many people reach out to me, Donna, saying that they that they're busy training today and that they're going to watch the replay. We would love you to also send us your YouTube channels. And if you're keen to join us on the masterclass in two weeks' time, it's going to be run on the 13th of May. And um, we would love to have you there. So have a wonderful Thursday. Cheers, and everyone. Thank you for saying they were amazing. Thank you. And you learned a lot. Oh, we love it. <laughs> wonderful. Goodbye. Yeah.